Good afternoon, um, and welcome to seven surprisingly simple ways to stem burnout. Um, so I'm talking about burnout because I've learned these lessons the hard way, um, and I'm really grateful to be here today, having come through um, some difficult times to be able to share um, the, the nuggets of insight that I've gleaned with you to hopefully save you and maybe the people that you care about um, from having to learn these things the hard way. Clicky thing works, excellent. Um, so first of all, what is burnout? Burnout, I think, really is your body saying stop. And it usually happens when you've ignored the early signs or maybe you didn't notice the early signs for whatever reason. Um, and it's kind of, you've really got to stop now. I'm not playing around, stop. Um, and the kind of technical definition is a prolonged stress response. Um, and this means it's not really about how stressful the stuff that's going on is. It might be really everyday, normal levels of stress, and you might be sitting there thinking, how can I be so weak that I'm burnt out when it's just normal stuff? Like, you're not weak. You're, the stress is prolonged, and it's that, it's that length of time that you spend in your stress response that is really crucial. Um, because getting stressed and then relaxing, getting stressed, relaxing, totally normal. That's life, right? Um, the problem happens when we get so good at being stressed, we've practiced it so often, we forget how to get unstressed um, and, and we're not able to get unstressed. Um, but this is kind of good news in a way because solving the structural issues that cause stress, kind of hard, doesn't fit in a 10 minute talk. Um, but interrupting that stress cycle um, and bringing moments of relaxation into each day so that your stress response is not prolonged, that's a lot easier to do. Um, so I'm gonna give you seven techniques. There's gonna be a little bit of participation because we learn by doing, not by hearing. Um, and then you can take these techniques and build them into your everyday lives to protect yourself from burnout or from increasing burnout if you're already in that position. So, tip number one, breathe well. I used to think that when people said breathe deeply, they meant something like this, gulping in as much air as possible. Maybe some of you think that. That is not what breathing deeply means. I learned this the hard way. Um, breathing deeply means breathing from deeply within your body. So if you put your hand on your stomach, sit up straight now, yeah, I mean it now, hand on your stomach, Breathing deeply means you feel your stomach move, not your shoulders. So you can take a little deep breath, a little breath from deep within your body. And that's actually more relaxing than a huge gulping breath. Because when you take a huge breath, you're kind of telling your body, there's not enough air, maybe we're drowning. And that makes you more stressed, right? So if you've ever thought, like I used to think, this breathing deeply stuff, it doesn't work. What are they talking about? That is probably why. So breathing deeply is breathing from your belly. The second part of breathing well, of breathing in a way that tells your body you're safe and you can relax, is that the out breath should be longer than the in breath. Um, so I use something called rectangular breathing. Find a rectangle, they're everywhere. There's one right behind me. Take a breath from deep in your belly as you scan the short side and then breathe out slowly as you go along the long side. So in is short, out is long. And that's a really helpful way to teach your body that you're safe and that you can relax and to interrupt that, that prolonged stress. And you can do it in a meeting. You know, you can look at the table, look at the door and just do it and nobody knows you're doing it. So that's really great. Tip two is hug. I'm not gonna make you hug the person next to you, don't worry. We haven't built up the psychological safety needed for that, I'm aware. Um, but I want you to hug yourselves, right? I want you to lift your knees up, wrap your arms around. Yeah? You learn by doing, not by hearing. Lift your knees up, wrap your arms around your knees um, and squeeze. Squeeze really tight and see how that feels. And now try squeezing gently and see how that feels. Um, so when you do that, you're giving yourself a lot of proprioceptive input. It's input to your muscles and your joints. Um, and that's really calming and soothing. And some of us like a lot of it and some of us like a little bit. There's no right or wrong answer. It's about getting to know what you need and meeting your needs to feel safe. 
Tip three, share delicious food. And I think, Murray, this might be one of the reasons why we've seen such an increase in burnout recently, because throughout history, sharing delicious food with other people is one of the ways that we celebrate the end of hard times, right? We break times of stress and go, oh, it's all right now, we can relax. And for a lot of people over the last couple of years, there haven't been opportunities to eat food in company. Um, so this one is really important. And if you're working remotely, many great benefits as other speakers have demonstrated. But one thing that you might be missing out on or your members of your team who are maybe younger, don't have families yet, might be missing out on is sharing delicious food. So think about how you can encourage that. Next tip is to move slowly. So arms out, we're gonna, we're gonna try it, we're gonna do it, because that's how you learn. Um, and just move your arm slowly to the side and slowly back again. And again, even slower, really, really slowly. And just feel how that feels. You know, you're aware of your body in a different way uh, when you move slowly. And you're telling yourself, you're safe. There's nothing to worry about. Um, and it, it works when you act like you're safe. You're sending signals to your body that you are safe. And that breaks the stress cycle. Uh, next up, we've got smell the roses. Um, so engaging with your senses is a really helpful way to break out of worry and break out of stress. Because when we're worrying, we're thinking about what happened. We're thinking about what's going to happen. We're not in the here and now. And when you engage your senses, you're grounding yourself in the here and now where actually you are safe, right? There are no tigers in this arena. You're good. Um, so engage your senses. We typically overuse our sight and sound senses in the modern world and underuse taste, smell, and touch. Uh, so try and work those into your everyday. Singing. It doesn't have to be singing well, right? Being in tune is irrelevant, but singing is really powerful because what it does is it activates the ventral vagus nerve. Um, and what that does is it overrides your parasympathetic system or your dorsal vagus nerve, and that is your stress state and your depressed state. So you're overriding being stressed or being kind of shut down, depressed, and putting yourself in a state where you are ready to engage socially, ready to learn. And that's a good state to be in. You're disrupting that chronic stress. Um, so singing, really powerful. Uh, cold water immersion also does the same thing. Personally, I would rather sing, but if you hate singing, then be my guest, go for a cold shower or a, or a cold dip. And the final tip is sunshine. So sunshine naturally causes us to produce more dopamine. Dopamine is the hormone that governs emotional regulation. So if you've ever felt like in winter you get more snappy um, or you get more depressed and you just want to hide away, it might be that a lack of dopamine and a lack of sunshine um, are driving that. You know, but it can also happen when we're working really hard and we work through our lunch breaks and we don't get out till after dark. Um, or you know, we're working from home so there's no need to commute and we just kind of forget to leave the house for a week. You're not getting enough sunshine. That again is gonna keep you in a stress state when you don't need to be. Um, so to break out of that, make sure that every day you spend time outside, right? Whether it's a, a fake commute around the block before you start work, which is a great way to set up some boundaries between work and home if they both happen in the same place, um, or whether it's a commitment to take your lunch outside. Um, and it works even when the sun isn't shining, right? I know if you live in this country, you might be thinking, well, there is no sunshine. Like, it's still there, it's behind the clouds, but it's there, actually, even when it's raining, when you go outside, you are exposing yourself to sunshine um, and that will be boosting your dopamine. So thank you very much for listening to these seven quick tips. Um, obviously, there are chronic stressors that I haven't addressed, but what I want you to know is if you do these things, you will be better equipped to deal with whatever those chronic stressors are for you. So get the simple things in place first. 
Um, and come and talk to me, speakers hours, I'll be around tomorrow. Let's connect. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>